My stomach hurts. I'm never eating sushi again. I have just been doing a whole lot of nothing. I wonder what they're doing. Welcome back to this week's training vlog. I hope you enjoyed the moody intro and the consumption of salt. So we've been listening to the Salt Fix recently. Very, very, very interesting book and in relation to just general health, but also to athletic performance. I can't remember the doctor's name who wrote it. But I think he's an actual doctor, not like a doctor of like rubber bands or whatever. You know, sometimes you see people sneak that into their titles. So just noticing it most specifically in conditioning for jiu-jitsu, which is very, very interesting, like very noticeable difference on conditioning uh, to be anyone who's doing conditioning. The huge or the larger intake in salt was, was very noticeable in that regard. So some sodium or salt or sodium was something I'd always paid attention to. I'd always salt my foods. Especially from the last few years, you know, Stan Everything is kind of the big proponents who made me take notice of that. But uh, this salt fix has made me really up the intake of salt and sodium, and it genuinely makes a very noticeable difference. One of the most interesting things it makes a difference on is actually sleep. Some nights it does make a quite an interesting difference to sleep. So if you're having difficulty sleeping, it might be worth looking at your sodium intake. I try aim for maybe seven or eight grams of salt a day maybe more if i can possibly do it so i salt all my foods heavily i put salt into my protein shakes when i use them i actually put salt into the coffee or well, decaf coffee this morning and don't notice it you just want to sneak in as much sodium as possible you know specifically as well as athletes and you sweat a lot depending you can be quite a salty sweater some people expel more salt than others uh, so it's something that I am definitely paying attention to, especially with jiu-jitsu. You need a lot of sweating, very, very humid environment in the uh, the studio. So something very, very notable. I'll definitely do a review on that. And it's very, very interesting, the history on it in regards to what changed. But in this session, I am back to the weightlifting. So again, obviously, I can't do any actually weightlifting movements. So the goal or prime focus on these training sessions for the next few weeks will be getting my squat up making sure I don't injure my shoulder and just staying in solid condition. So you may have remembered from a previous vlog where I talked about I wasn't too sure how I would structure the training over the coming weeks and what focus I would prioritize first. So would I do get my strength back first and then hit high volume weightlifting or would I do high volume training, you know, high volume strength training, high volume weightlifting, and then try bring back my weightlifting and my strength at the same time. But due to happenstance of destiny or fate or whatever you want to call it, the finger has made that decision for me. So the prime goal now over the next few weeks will be to get my squat up north of 220. And I will think pretty no problem with that right now. To be honest, right now, I'd say if you put a gun to my head, I'd, I'd hit 220 any day. But I want to you know, be repping that, probably hitting closer to 240 within the next maybe five or six weeks. We'll see how it goes. So that'll at least allow me then, when I return to weightlifting, to not have to worry too much about the squat for a short period of time. And I can focus on getting the weightlifting back. Then I can, you know, taper the squat down a small bit for a period of time, have it at maintenance for at like 240 or 250. And then once I push the weightlifting again after that initial high volume phase, I can then be doing moderate volume in my snatch and clean and jerk and then i can do a bit more volume again on the clean uh, or sorry in the squat and push that to a decent place maybe beyond 270. Uh, in this session main things i was doing so was reducing the number of sets and reps i would be doing in the squat and i would be transferring them out across the week so originally i was doing sets of 10 and higher rep sets in the front squat and the back squat like you saw but as i am upping the frequency of squats due to the lack of snatch and clean and jerk i was obviously reducing the number of reps per set in the weight of thing or in the squatting movements because i don't want to be doing multiple sessions of high volume you know it's not productive it's not feasible there's no need to do it and probably get injured it's hard to recover from for a variety of reasons so we're spreading that out over the week keeping the reps and sets lower and the weights a little bit further beyond what i would have planned to be doing but it again it will be productive so mainly in this session just had a weird little kind of twinge in my uh, super spinatus so just making sure that it is warmed up adequately not irritating it 
is it something that I need to work on? Is it an issue I'm addressing? Am I listening to it normally when you get injured? And it's funny, Gabriel mentioned this in his recent vlog, and we always say it as well. You'll know months beforehand you get an injury. Your body will always let you know. So just paying attention to this. Am I lacking shoulder stability? So it was just kind of weird little twinge. Was it just a random thing that lasts like a day or two? Just a random muscular pain? It might not even have been from training. It might have been from sleeping weird. But you always pay attention to these things. So just in a little bit of the full can, I think, a squat university or iron calls them. You know, no one's ever done too much stability work in regards to your joints in a warm-up. Uh, well, some people certainly have. You can waste time training, but not this. It felt quite good after it. There was definitely a little strange... Our little change in stability on the right hand side where the supraspinatus was kind of irritating me so compared to the left hand side so notable so i'll just keep these in for a little bit especially when i'm not able to do a lot of snatch clean jerk and barbells overhead that are too heavy so again it'll be a nice easy area to address so for this session just strict press back squats and then some assistance stuff at the end which i'll show you so other primary focus or kind of secondary goal in training at the moment or my kind of performance is still continuous cutting weight so you remember last kind of October, I would have talked about my post training block and I would have talked about that I'm going to cut weight for a variety of reasons that I wanted more power to weight ratio uh, for it's better for mobility. It just kind of feels better. Like for example, at the moment I feel just a lot better in general in like day to day living. If anyone knows, you know, when you're north of a hundred kilos, especially if you're under six foot, it's not that you don't feel great. It's just that you certainly feel better when you lose weight. For example, I was going for up the mountain with my one of my dogs the day before, and we're doing a lot of, you know, specifically trying to burn more calories with a little extra cardio for about an hour and a half. And we were just, you know, a lot of steep climbs, walking through the forest, walk up the trails. It just felt fucking great, to be honest. Really feel, you can notice the difference. So I'm down from about 106 to what, 102 and a half. Incidentally, the weight I need to be 98 was my goal for the weight loss last October before I'd even done jiu-jitsu, but thankfully that weight is actually the weight I need to be for the competition for the 100.5 kilo class because in jiu-jitsu, if you're wrestling in the gi, you actually wear the gi at weigh-in. So you can get comp gis, which are like one kilo or whatever, but my gi is, I think, uh, two kilos or it's like one and a half kilos, which is a little bit of a mindfuck when you're trying to think of your weight. So you kind of have to subtract two or one kilos but it's an interesting way of doing it. It's a little bit strange. I don't necessarily agree with it, but that's the sport. So that is the goal anyway. So for a variety of different reasons. So just a lot of conditioning work at the moment to obviously stay in shape for jiu-jitsu, but also to drastically aid in the weight loss. Obviously, prime focus is reduction in calories, but I'm doing a lot of conditioning. One thing I do quite well if you're trying to lose weight is high frequency, shorter duration, low intensity, steady state cardio. So what that typically looks like for me is I have a bike on a turbo trainer and one to two times a day, I'll do two 15 minute sessions on the bike. So literally, you know, by the end of the 15 sessions, I'll be noticeably sweating, but I won't be absolutely gunning to myself. So I won't be like hit training. So it's very, very useful for obviously conditioning in general and maintenance of that. But it's also quite a handy way of just burning some extra calories. I quite enjoy it as well. It feels somewhat productive. It certainly aids in the weight loss. It doesn't make it harder. So that's just a something I focus on when I'm trying to lose weight. So that morning for this session, I've done a... 50 minutes on the bike 20 minutes on the bike i did some kettlebell overhead walks kettlebell slight kettlebell pressing and hold single leg glute bridges hip airplanes so all those stuff you would have seen me do when i was rehabbing with my knee so they have quite deteriorated quite a bit which is totally fine they are the things that helped me rehab my knees last year when i had those issues and this year they feel a lot weaker obviously because i hadn't didn't keep on top of them during my downtime and training for a few months which is totally okay that's that's happened that's no big deal so just staying on top of those getting back into them specifically it's interesting on the single leg glute bridges i can feel there's a real lack of contraction there's a real lack of intensity in the single legs they're coming back after a few sessions but i noticed and some of them have mostly felt it in my lower back, not in terms of pain, but I could feel the pressure on my lower back and muscular tension. So getting on top of those, everything feels great. The left knee is just a teeny little bit, the tendon above the left kneecap, I can feel it a small bit. So that is the side where my 
ankle mobility is a lot tighter on the left hand side so obviously I have still huge range of motion in those compared to I suppose maybe most people but for myself there's certainly a difference on the left hand side and it's something I didn't address properly last year and I'm paying big attention to it now and making sure I'm addressing it so it won't become an issue later so need to stay on top of that big fan of quad nordics so I'm doing those about twice a week so to prevent that quad tendon from tightening up after squats so I noticed some sessions that it would tighten up a little bit so i want to stay on top of those and weight them and kind of push them a little bit because it's a very very nice assistance exercise i like how it feels it certainly helps maintain and progress mobility but specifically i want to make sure that i am working the you know hip flexor to a solid range of motion and i wonder if that's contributing to it because it was a hip mobility issue that caused some of that knee pain last year so i want to get on top of those and maintain it uh, but you can see pretty good range of motion for these this is actually as far as i can go before my knees start coming up off the ground so you can actually do that variation where you let the knees come up off the ground but there isn't really any need to particularly do that and then the good mornings then just a nice general exercise i particularly prefer to do these with no knee flexion and bend forward and not send my hips back as much as possible i want to send my chest forward as much as possible and minimize the rearward hip travel because i really want to focus on the mid and lower back benefits of those kind of good mornings and also some hamstrings obviously because you're flexing at the hip and the waist you're obviously going to be getting some hamstring activation but still a great exercise paired them supersetted them with the quad nordics thanks for watching guys if you have any questions about what i'm doing uh, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them.